Hello everyone and welcome to the New Jersey IDD Youth Transitions Conference. We are thrilled that you are taking the time to watch this pre-recorded session. This conference is created for youth and young adults who experience an intellectual and or developmental disability, their caregivers, and the professionals who serve them. We are so grateful to have the chance to share some valuable resources for our community. Our theme this year is Navigating the Hero's Journey. We believe that we are all the heroes of our own story, each with a unique challenge to overcome and lessons to learn. However, none of us walk our paths alone. Together, we support each other, witness each other's losses and triumphs, and build a world full of stories worth sharing. We are excited to introduce our next session, our next session, sorry, and our wonderful presenter, Nicole Valley. Uh, she will be discussing navigating the Division of Developmental Disabilities Service System. Uh, we are thrilled to have uh, Nicole here with us today to share her insights and expertise. Let's give a warm welcome to our presenter. The floor is yours. April, thank you so much for having me and thank you everyone for joining us for this presentation. It is called Navigating the Division of Developmental Disability Service System. And I am here from the Office of Transition to Adult Life and Employment. And when you think of the word navigating, you may think about getting into your vehicle and using that navigation system in your vehicle to take you the easiest route from point A to point B. Now, as we know, Life doesn't always work that way. Sometimes there are roadblocks, there's construction, there may be a rerouting of you and your journey. So we'd like you to think of us as your navigation system as you move through this transition process from school services to adult services. Our mission. DDD assures the opportunity for individuals with developmental disabilities to receive quality services and supports, participate meaningfully in their communities, and exercise their right to make choices. We all want the right to make those choices that are best for ourselves and for our loved ones. DDD operates on a Medicaid-based fee-for-service system. What this means is that there are standardized rates for services rendered. For every dollar that the state of New Jersey spends on services, the federal government will match that amount. Payment is rendered after services are delivered rather than prior to those services being delivered. This allows you increased flexibility, choice, and again, quality of those choices. Our system also provides federal funding for home and community-based services and supports for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Everyone that comes into our service system must be Medicaid eligible and maintain that eligibility throughout the time that they utilize our services. Individuals access services through one of two programs. So there's one Medicaid waiver and there are two programs. The community care program, also known as CCP, is for those individuals who may require a higher level of care, such as those in group homes or nursing facilities. Most of our service recipients do come into the system on the supports program which is also noted as SP. Services are accessed through Medicaid approved providers and service planning is provided through support coordination agencies, which I will talk a little bit more about later in the presentation. So who do we serve? We serve adults at least 21 years of age and older, individuals diagnosed with intellectual and developmental disabilities that occurred prior to the age of 22 and are considered lifelong, meet the functional criteria of having a developmental disability, be a resident of New Jersey, and again, be eligible for Medicaid. 
Now we will discuss the preparation to transition into our adult service system. So during this time of transition, which is so critical, and we understand that, we ask that families sit with their child and reflect on seven areas of that person's life that can support planning for a successful, meaningful, and fulfilling life. We refer to this as the recipes acronym. I'm going to take us through each of these briefly. We begin with R, responsibilities. Your child may have chores that they do at home, maybe on a weekly or monthly basis. And maybe as they get older, they would like more responsibilities. E, education. Your child may have a favorite subject in school. And maybe this is something that they would like to pursue on a post-secondary education level once they move into our service system. C, community life. Your child may be involved in a youth group or a faith-based organization. And maybe they would like to expand upon that involvement as they get older. I, individual's health and well-being. And I feel that this is a really important one because this gets to the heart of what makes your child shine, what makes them smile and feel good about themselves. Personally, for me, I play five instruments. I've been a musician my entire life. I'm also a music therapist. And music for me is something that brings me great joy in my life. It's something I love to do. So that's what we're looking at when we think of health and well-being, physical health, mental health, and emotional well-being. All these things are very important now and when your child is transitioning into adult services. P, place to live. Your child may live at home with you or with a family member currently, but maybe they would like their own place to live when they get older. DDD does offer a housing voucher for those who are eligible in our service system. And I will talk about that in a little bit. We have E, employment. So New Jersey is an employment first state, which means that employment is the preferred outcome for everyone, regardless of whether or not you have a disability. And S, social life. What does your child like to do for fun? Do they like to go bowling with their friends on the weekends or maybe play board games at home with family? How can we expand upon that social life when they move into the adult system? So all of these areas, reflecting, learning, and exploring can really help your child understand what his or her needs might be as they enter our service system. We have something that we call person-centered planning tools that are very important during this transition process. And one of those tools is the life course trajectory, which you see on your screen. And really what it is, is taking past experiences and what we've learned from those experiences and using them to move into the future to decide what we want moving forward. So a lot of times we look at what we've had in the past and we see what hasn't worked for us and it may be good to help inform what we do want in the future. For example, if someone lives in a more rural area, maybe they don't enjoy that as much and they think, all right, this really isn't working for me. Maybe living in a more urban city type environment would be better for me as I move into adulthood. So looking at those past experiences and moving forward into that good life, examining the life course trajectory and the steps that we need to get there. Another one of these tools that we'd like to share with families is the integrated support star. And this is really looking at current supports that a person has to help understand and inform what they may need as they move into the adult service system. So briefly, we look at the top, personal strengths and assets. So this is something that a person would be good at, something that others like and admire, um, their assets, belongings, that sort of thing. 
on the right hand side, we see relationships. So that could be their relationship with you or a trusted neighbor, family member. In the bottom right, we have eligibility specific. So that would be our services within DDD or the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation Services, that first stop for employment support. On the bottom left, we have community-based services and supports. So these are membership organizations, uh, local services or public resources that everyone uses. And finally, on the top left, we have technology. So that could be assistive or adaptive devices, maybe an app that your child has on their phone that helps them to move through their day a little bit easier. So taking a look at all of these resources that your child currently has and determining what they may need as they move into the adult system. And speaking of those available services and supports. This is a list of our services and supports for those who are deemed eligible to come into the service system. You will notice, for example, on the left-hand side of the screen, community-based supports. It is noted with an SP only. And what that means is that that particular service or support is only available in the supports program. Just as it says, community transition services, CCP only, that means that that service is available only through our community care program. All of these services and supports are listed in greater detail in section 17 of both the supports program and community care program manuals, which are listed on the DDD website. And I will have that address to share with you in a bit. Now we're going to discuss the steps to access the services and supports that you just saw. So looking at this vision for support across the life course, we begin with early intervention, moving into children's services, and then the transition period, that age 14 to 21. So we do recommend that if your child can remain in school until 21 and invoke that educational entitlement, that they do so because this will allow them to access all of the services and supports that the school system has in place. And then they can move into our service system upon turning 21. We do suggest that if your child does graduate at 18, to have a firm plan in place for those intervening three years. Uh, perhaps your child will be working or maybe they'll be attending a program, but really, we want to see people making that continued progress, continuing the progress that they're making in school, and then as they enter into the adult system. And again, 14 to 21 years of age, that transition planning period, the recipes that we talked about, those skills and preferences that your child has now, and helping them decide what their meaningful life, their good life, is going to look like in the future. And then the life course trajectory, the person-centered planning tools. We talked about the integrated support star, making those connections to the supports they currently have and then the resources that they're going to need. Um, we do encourage you, if you haven't already investigated this, to look at planningforadultlife.org. Planning for Adult Life is something that DDD sponsors and it's run by the ARC of New Jersey. It is a wonderful resource for everything transition related. They offer training sessions, student parent groups, and webinars. All of their webinars are archived on their website. So they're not time sensitive. You can view them at any time that is convenient to you. So go to that website that you see on the bottom of your screen for more information, planning for adult life, Org. If there is one thing that I ask you take away from today's presentation, it is this, the graduate timeline. This provides a detailed look at all, all four steps that are needed to access our service system 
and when in that final year of eligibility, you and your child should be taking those steps. It lists all of our community services offices in New Jersey. There are eight offices throughout the state. I am based in Mays Landing, but we have offices all through New Jersey, and those phone numbers are listed on the first page of the timeline. And you can call those numbers at any time for transition-related help. And I would definitely print this out and maybe put it on your refrigerator or have it handy during that final year of school. So these are the four steps to accessing DDD services. And it's really the first three steps that are going to determine eligibility. Step one is applying for Medicaid. Step two is completing either our full or short application. Step three, completing the New Jersey Comprehensive Assessment Tool, also known as the NJCAT. And the final step, step four, is completing the Support Coordination Agency Selection Form. So step one, applying for Medicaid eligibility. When a person turns 18, they are now considered a household of one. And even if they're still living in the family home, family income is no longer a factor. It's also referred to as the age of majority. So at 18, a person can apply for adult Medicaid. And you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen, there are the allowable types of Medicaid for the supports program, and on the right, the community care program. I'll leave this for a moment so you can take a look. Now, DDD does offer extra assistance after you've applied for Medicaid. So if a person, for example, receives a denial letter, there is a way to appeal this process and get more information as to why the denial letter was sent. You can complete the Medicaid eligibility troubleshooting form. That's the link there on your screen. And you want to email that form along with a copy of your denial letter. You can upload that to that email address that you see on your screen. Our help desk is very responsive uh, in answering inquiries related to issues such as a denial. So I strongly encourage you, uh, if you do receive a letter, to contact them immediately and see what they can help you with in terms of giving you more information about next steps to take. Step two is our application for eligibility. And really this intake process serves two purposes, and that's to determine whether an applicant is eligible and has applied for Medicaid, and then to determine if the person meets the functional criteria of having a developmental disability. You'll need to provide some supporting documentation for this, and then also to complete that NJCAT. Now there are two versions of our application. There's a short application and a full application. So if an applicant is 18 or older and has not been previously determined eligible for DD services through DCF or form care, you'll want to complete the full application. If an applicant is 18 or older and has been previously determined eligible for DD services through DCF or form care, you can submit the short application. Of course, if you still have questions on which application to complete, you can contact any one of our community services offices, and then you can download the application from our website. Here is a requested documentation for when a person is applying for DDD services. On the left, you'll see is necessary, and on the right, helpful but not necessary documentation. And everything that you see on the left, uh, most of that can be supplied through the school. We do ask that it be recent within the last three years. However, that doesn't apply to the medical documentation of the disability because that documentation was recorded whenever that disability was diagnosed. Uh, but on the right, the helpful but not necessary. Uh, some people like to submit recent IEPs. 
Um, and that is something that people do. Uh, and anything else on the right that you may have, I am of the thought that you can never submit too much documentation, but certainly what is listed on the left is what is required. We also encourage, if a person hasn't already done this, to obtain a New Jersey non-driver ID for persons with a disability. And this can be obtained by New Jersey residents 14 years of age and older. It can be useful to um, show proof of residency when applying for a job, of course, uh, when applying for other services, including ours. I mean, it is an ID only, it's not a license. Um, and it can be obtained through uh, going to the New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission website, or you can go in person to any one of the offices throughout the state, whatever's most convenient for you. Now, step three in the process is complete, completing the NJCAT assessment. This is a mandatory tool that evaluates support needs in three main areas. It's part of the intake process. Those three areas are self-care, behavioral, and medical. Now, the results of this assessment establish an individual's tier, their budget, when they come into our service system. A reassessment can be done on request, but we do want you to know that that reassessment then becomes the NJCAT of record. So a person's budget, as a result, could increase or decrease depending on the results of that reassessment. And again, the reassessment does become the NJCAT of record. Now there are five base tiers in our service system, A through E. A represents the least amount of need and E the most. Any of these tiers can result in an acuity factor and what that means is that a person has been assessed with higher clinical support needs in either medical and or behavioral areas. So as you see on the screen, for example, if a person has been assessed at a tier A and they have an acuity, that will be represented by an uppercase A and then the lowercase A for the acuity. Now the tier does determine the budget that a person is allocated on our service system, and then also the service reimbursement rate for most of the services and supports. So this is how eligibility is determined. Person will receive that letter of eligibility. They will then complete the Support Coordination Agency selection form, and then they can begin accessing services. You know, we do encourage you to contact your intake worker four months prior to when services should begin and then support the initiation to complete that admissions process. Now, if someone is determined ineligible, they'll receive a letter that explains that determination and then they'll be given information on how to appeal the outcome. So you may be asking, what is support coordination? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's the coordination of all of the services and supports that someone receives when they come into our system. It's care management, and it allows our service recipients to gain access to all of the services and supports that they need to thrive and have that good life. This is purely an administrative cost. Service reimbursement does not come out of the individualized budget. This is purely a cost for DDD. So how do you access this support? Person can choose their own agency or they can have our system auto assign an agency. Now, once that agency is selected, a support coordinator will then be assigned to work with the individual and their support system. There is a full list available of all the agencies that are linked with DDD, and that can be found at the link, the site that you see there on your screen. So how to work with your coordinator. I like to think of this as what a president might do when they're building their cabinet, bringing all the people that they trust, 
people whose decision making they trust, and bringing them together into the service planning team. And that can be anyone. It can be a family member. It can be a trusted educator. All of those people come together to allow the individual to use that person-centered planning process that we've been talking about to help identify those outcomes that are desired and then the service needs. So then that person and the support coordinator and their team will come together to develop the ISP, the Individualized Service Plan, which is sort of like the IEP of the adult service system. And that's going to identify, again, all of these needs, these services and supports that are going to help the person move into adulthood. And then that individual and their family will participate in monthly contacts with the support coordinator. So getting started, the individual and their family will be contacted by the support coordinator within three days of that person being selected by the agency. Within 10 days, they will meet with that person and the rest of their planning team. And then within the month, that ISP should be completed. And then once the ISP is approved, services can begin. So bringing everything together full circle, we have the assessment, the NJCAT. Then we have that person-centered planning tool. And then the ISP is developed through all of the information that is gathered. And then that person can access the services and supports. Step four is that SCA selection form. So in the fall prior to graduation, if you haven't already done this, you wanna make sure that your child is eligible for DDD, has maintained Medicaid and has completed the NJ cap. And then in February, March of the graduating year, you wanna submit that SCA selection form. In April, we will begin assigning the agency. And then between April and June, you can begin that planning process with the support coordinator, maybe invite them to uh, a final team meeting. And then once the ISP is approved, your child can begin to access services on graduation. So these are some of the areas and examples of topics that may come up during that monthly meeting with the support coordinator, that monthly phone meeting. Uh, and of course, it, nothing is limited to this, uh, to these topics. You can um, talk to the support coordinator about anything that might be on your mind. Um, if there's something that is going well that you want to let them know about, that's a great time to discuss it. If you want to change providers, maybe your child isn't fond of the um, day program that they're attending, and maybe you'd like to switch to another day program. So that's really something that's uh, important to address with the support coordinator. Let them know what's going well. Let them know if there might need to be some changes made. And then there will be a quarterly face-to-face -face review with that person, and then an annual in-home visit with the support coordinator. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we do have a housing voucher, a subsidy program for those who are eligible in our service system. Of course, the person has to have active Medicaid, currently uh, have a current NJCAT assessment, and then currently receiving or planning to receive well, at least one of our services. And how it works is the person will contribute 30% of their income towards the rent and then that voucher covers the remainder of the rent cost. The total rent cost has to be within our published rent standards. And there's a link at the bottom of the screen for all the information that you may need regarding the voucher program. There's frequently asked questions. Uh, the determination form for eligibility is there. And then there's even a webinar that outlines the process from start to finish. And if you do have questions, you can direct those questions to the email address that you see below the link for the FAQ page. 
And we do encourage that you participate in more. We have other presentations that we offer uh, coming soon. Every third Thursday of the month, we're going to have something called the Transition Thursday Webinar Series. So a lot of transition-related topics and helpful information for you. I encourage you to scan that QR code that you see there on the left-hand side of your screen. That's our listserv, so you can subscribe to Division Updates and uh, on top of everything that's happening with DDD. And then on the right, uh, we do have a presentation called Preparing for a Bright Future. And this is a firsthand look at what it's like for someone who works for the state of New Jersey, uh, who has a disability. And this is someone within our unit. Um, he openly talks about having a disability and his life prior to joining our unit. He works uh, within the Transition to Adult Life and Employment Unit with me. And it's a really great presentation, especially for young people to see what is possible uh, for life in the adult service system. Of course, there's the navigating presentation that you're uh, sitting in on right now. And then we do also offer a presentation that is centered on employment. Now some general resources for you. Our website, it has been revamped in the last few months and it is very user-friendly. A lot of transition related information, of course, can be found on our website. Uh, information about employment, housing assistance, guardianship, and a lot more. So I would strongly encourage you to go to the link that you see at the bottom of your screen for more information. And I encourage you to contact us if you would like to. Our community services offices, again, eight of them throughout New Jersey, I am in the Mays Landing office. I would be happy to help you if you're in our area and you need assistance. Those are the phone numbers. And then there's our division phone number and then an email for routine questions. And again, please stay informed. Uh, there is the email address. If you didn't scan the QR code, that's for our division update. And we encourage you to write division update subscribe in the subject line. And that will help you uh, to stay more informed about what we're doing and provide you with our e-news bulletin. And our help desks, this is a list of them. Our, our unit runs the transition help desk. So for any transition related questions, you can reach out to us at any time. And then we have the supports program, Again, the Medicaid eligibility help desk that I discussed earlier in the presentation, and then the fee for service implementation help desk. That is the conclusion of my presentation today. Again, my name is Nicole Valley. I'm with the Office of Transition to Adult Life and Employment, and I wish all of you the best in your transition journeys. I know it can be a very challenging experience, but I hope that you obtained the information that you were seeking today. And if you have questions, again, please feel free to contact our help desk at any time. We are always available to assist you. So thank you so much. And at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to April. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Nicole Valley, for sharing your valuable insights with us today. We truly appreciate your time and your expertise. And thank you to everyone who has taken the time to watch our presentation today. We hope that you learned something valuable and that you feel inspired on your hero's journey. Please be sure to check out our website for other pre-recordings and resources that we've shared. Your journey doesn't end here, and we're here to support you every step of the way. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day.